Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about how to take a lift kit and raise your trailer. The lift kit I got is from E-Trailer. Full disclosure, no association to E-Trailer. They aren't paying me anything. I just happened to get one from E-Trailer because it fit my trailer. So, uh, the one I got raises it up just a little bit less than three inches. So, there's two brackets that go on each side. I'm going to show you how to install those brackets so that you can raise your trailer three inches allowing you some additional clearance. In my case, I plan on putting some uh, a gray water tank as well as a fresh water tank underneath my trailer. Okay, I have a cargo trailer. It's six feet by 12 feet long. And we're gonna be raising it today. The tools we'll be using are a regular floor jack, such as one in back. We have the Dexter K71-707-01 and these are the razors which will lift the trailer an additional uh, 2 and 5 eighths inches up so that we can put tanks underneath it. The tools we'll be using is simply a wrench, it's a 5 sixteenths, a air driver for uh, taking off the nuts so that we can raise it, uh, tire iron, and I have two, four, six jack stands. Uh, these four gray ones are going to be used for uh, underneath the trailer on all four sides, and these last two I'm going to use to help hold up the actual axle uh, because we have to take off one side at a time and I don't want the axle falling and perhaps bending or bending any of the metal. Okay, so one of the first things I'll be doing is using this jack stand coming up underneath this corner here and just raising this. This tire is up just high enough to spin this freely. Okay, so I've now taken off the wheel, and what we're going to be doing is taking off this nut here. Which I've been greasing with some WD-40 for about a week, as well as Find it. Okay, it's this one here. Again, I've been putting WD-40 on both of these for about a week. I am going to use those other uh, jacks because what you need to do is take off one side at a time when you're doing this. But what I don't want to do is bend this metal frame on the other side because when I take these two nuts off, this is going to fall down and we're going to end up placing in the extenders on top of these. So. Okay, so what I've done is the, uh, the jack stands were too high. So I'm just going to have to be extremely careful and I'm going to put just a small amount of pressure right now on the axle, which is this square bar going across to the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and start taking out these two bolts. This one on this side, the other one on the other side. Okay, so we're going to try to take this one off now. Let's see, I kind of got my thing in the way. Alright, 
So we now have both of these nuts off. Let's get this one back on the way it was. So we now have both of these nuts off. When I lower this down ever so slowly, this should break loose from here and we'll slide our other piece in. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so this is the bracket that goes on the other side. They're both made identically the same. You'll see that it has two holes, one here and one there, and then two on the bottom. So when you put this in, those two holes on the bottom go face down. And the reason you do one side at a time is because you'll actually have to put some pressure on this. You're going to have to put your knee on there and then you're going to have to push down on it a bit and then you'll slide this piece right in. So you can see I slide that in. I lined it up as best as I could anyway to get it as flush as I can. The holes appear to be perfectly aligned with the other ones that were there before. You can kind of see there. And I guess you can see that as well. So what I'm going to do now is in, uh, install the bolts and the nuts and I'll show you how that works in just a second. All right, what you're going to see is kind of tough, but you can kind of see how uh, this bolt on the inside has these little indentations where it's been kind of serrated. And what you're going to do is you're going to start from the opposite side, this side here. So that when you screw in this, this bolt, it'll screw in fairly easy, it's going to get to here, and now it's going to become very difficult. And basically that locks that down into place. So for this one, this is going to go through the back side. So we're going to put this in first, this, and we're going to have a washer on this side for the back side. Okay, so as you can see, I installed the bolt here, and I installed one there on this side. That leaves these two holes on the bottom, this one. Okay, hard to see there, but get this in there. Yeah, there's the other one, okay. And then, on the back end of this, what I've done, is installed the nut with one washer on the back. So that's all you need is the bolt and one washer on the back for these. For these other ones, the ones that are going to end up going here, we're going to have to put a washer here and a washer down below as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tighten these up. This one and the other one and then I'll install the two bottom ones. All right, so those have all been tightened up now. This one and that one in there. So what we're going to do now is take one of these with the washer on it. So you have a washer on top, washer on bottom. We're going to stick one there. And we're going to stick one over in this other one. Okay, so both of those have washers, and now we're going to put a washer underneath, along with a bolt, tighten these up, and they'll be good to go. It's pretty much that easy. We'll do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll put the tires back on again. So this is a torque wrench, and you'll see this one goes up to 140 on both sides. Uh, it says that these bolts and nuts need to be torqued uh, somewhere between about 120 and 150. So I torqued mine to 140. So you're going to have to get up underneath here, like I am here. And then this will go on to here. And you'll look at the little gauge as you move this and it'll tell you what the torque ratio is so make sure 
that you use a torque wrench so you know exactly how much pressure are on these bolts. Okay, I thought I'd just give you a quick walk around of the finished product. You can see there's quite a significant difference in the height of the trailer now. It's two and five eighths inches higher. You can see the clearance in the tires is significantly different. But uh, all in all, came out very nice. No real problems of any kind. Um, just give you some idea of how much higher that sits up now. So it should be easy to put uh, water tanks and gray water tanks, fresh water tanks and gray water tanks underneath it. I hope you got something out of this video today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. I hope that I inspired you so that you can inspire others. That's what life's all about. Providing people with information so they can put that information to good use to improve their lives. You can get caught up on all my videos at BeatHarvestMan.com. You should see that address at the bottom of your screen right about now. Until next time, this is the Beat Harvest Man signing off for today.